Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. My name is Ricardo Silva. Today I'm going to be doing the part two of my body paint uh, series. And this time I want to concentrate on uh, selecting UV polygons as well as polygons. In other words, there are two sets of uh, elements that you can select inside body paint. That's why the slide that I have here on screen basically highlights which tools are for using with the UV components and which tools are used for the object components. And uh, these are the tools that, uh, at least to me, they were very confusing in the beginning. And I want to emphasize the difference between these two because... If, uh, you know, they were confusing me, then they might be confusing you as well, okay? So I hope they are not as confusing to you as they were to me. But in any case, let me just go ahead into Cinema 4D and show you a little exercise that I'm going to be doing. In Cinema 4D, I have this cube with a texture that has been already prepared to be applied to this cube. Whenever you are going to do a texture, applying a texture to a model using the UV edit, there are many workflows. There are times when uh, somebody already prepares the texture and then you have to apply it. There are other times when you don't have a texture and then you have to recreate the texture and apply it yourself and, you know, start creating and so forth. So the workflows are very... Uh, different all the time depending on the type of project of type of model or in the team that you are working with in this particular case my workflow in here is that i have already the actual texture so if i double click on this texture i can see that uh, uh, this image let me just uh, open it for you uh, has been created in photoshop it's a bitmap image and it has all these little shapes in there. The idea is that I don't want to have a, the polygons have every single uh, shape, the same image on all four sides. I want to have a polygon that only contains the red circle, another one that contains the, the yellow uh, square, and another one that contains the orange, and another one that contains the label, and another one that contains the text. So in other words, I'm going to be specifically moving my UV polygons into the areas that they are supposed to be in, so the map falls according to the UV edit that I'm doing. Okay, so that is a very simple exercise, and this is the type of exercise that you should be doing in the beginning to understand the difference between your tools. Okay, so Knowing that, the first thing I want to do that uh, is that I am going to apply the texture to my object. And once again, uh, if you uh, notice how this uh, <laughs> object was created, this is a uh, polygonal cube that doesn't have UVW tag. Therefore, uh, the uh, texture tag uses the first uh, projection method, in this case spherical, because if you go to UVW mapping, nothing happens, nothing shows up in there. So the spherical is the default when you do not have a UVW map. And that's fine, because once you have that, now we can go ahead into the tags menu inside the object manager and select the generate UVW coordinates. By doing that, now this is being applied into the UVW that it created automatically. And now we can go into the layout of BP UV Edit. Now that we are here, we can see that there are certain flaws, okay? If you remember from the previous tutorial, I emphasize that whenever you want to select something, you either select the UV polygon and the selection tool in order to select polygons, UV polygons, in your uh, 3D uh, view. You can also do that in your 2D view, of course. And if you drag, you can drag and select polygons, okay? And as you can see, whenever I highlight one of the polygons in the 2D view, I can see that it also gets highlighted on my 3D view. Something else that also I mentioned before is that I see the texture in here, but I do not see the texture in the 2D view. And that is because my texture has, uh, it's probably loaded, but it's not selected. So in this menu, under textures, if it, the texture is loaded, it should appear in here. Once it's in there, you can select it, and now you see the actual image in your uh, 2D view. 
But at this moment, because I'm going back and forth, I can actually use an empty canvas. The empty canvas is going to help me see my UV polygons a lot clearer. So it's better. It's, it's actually better for me at this point to be able to select this uh, uh, UV polygons and much easier in here. Okay. So the idea is that the polygon or the UV polygon on top, I am going to put that into a uh, um, into a, into the red uh, circle that I wanted to to uh, map the red circle in there. But what I see here in my 2D view is that that polygon is actually very flat. So how can I do that? Maybe if I go to the scale and I try to scale it, it doesn't, it doesn't help me. As you can see here, it's not working. So what's going on? Well, what you have to do before anything else, before trying to modify your tools, is basically apply a projection to your polygons. Uh, as you remember, the spherical projection was the default when we uh, applied the texture initially, and then we created the UV tag, and uh, we didn't do any more projections afterwards. So what you have to do is go into the actual um, tab down here where it says UV mapping, and then there should be a tab called projection. The projection uh, controls in here, they are available because I am in the UV polygon and the selection tool. If you are in another tool, like for example, uh, if you are in, in one of these polygonal tools, sometimes this tool is not available. Okay, so in this particular case, it is available all the time, but to make sure that you are in the correct mode, make sure that you are in the UV polygons and the selection tool. And now we can select one of these projections. Now, our object right now, of course, it is a cube. So we have three different options that we can select from. We're not going to select the sphere because we know it's not going to map correctly. Cylinder is that it's not going to work either. Frontal, not yet. Flat, no, nothing like that. So cubic would be a good option. So if I click on cubic, then I get the original UV mapping that was embedded in the parametric objects, but every single face now contains the contents of the full image. And we can see here in our 2D image that indeed every single polygon, UV polygon, is on top of each other. So all six polygons are on top of each other right here. Therefore, the image is being mapped identically to each polygon. So that first uh, projection is not working for us either. Let's try the second one, which is called the Cubic 2. So when you click on Cubic 2, now this works better as a projection. Like, let's suppose that you have a paper that I give you and I ask you, please, can you use this paper to wrap around the cube? And you probably will cut it out in this shape to make sure that it will fit perfectly into the cube. So in other words, this area outside the polygons is going to be wasted. You're going to throw it away after you cut it out and you're not going to use it. The only uh, texture that you're going to use is the one inside that actually is going to be glued into the polygons of your object. Okay. So sometimes in your texture, you're going to have basically empty areas that are going to be not used. Okay, so that is the cubic two, and I think that's going to be working fine. The box is an identical one at this point because the cube is a perfect cube. The box you probably would use only when your uh, object is not a perfect cube, but it's still in a cubic form. Okay. Well, now that we have the layout and we can see all the polygons laid out one next to each other, we can easily select now with my selection tool, click out and select the one on top. The one on top, as you can see, is this one on the, on the top of the 2D representation of my texture. And if I want to put the red circle right there inside there, now that's the time when I go to the textures and bring my texture JPEG. With my move tool, I move it to a point where I think it's going to be perfectly uh, scale in order for me to put the actual circle right there perfectly fine. Okay, so now I have my circle. Okay, and I can still move it around if I feel that it's uh, more towards one side than the other and so forth. Okay, now 
you might be asking yourself, how can I restrict the movement of uh, of of the the UV polygons in here? Well, I can tell you that as far as I know, there are no shift keys or anything that is going to hold this straight or anything. There are no tools like that. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier in the first video, this interface for body paint needs a complete overhaul, especially on those areas of restricting, rotating, moving, and editing polygons. Okay? So just keep that in mind that there are some tools that they should be there, but they are not here. <laughs> anyway, let's continue with that. So, uh, oops, I did something. As you can see, I can move my texture here as well in my 3D view, which by accident I did. So also be careful with that. Uh, now this polygon over here, I'm going to go to the selection tool and click to select this one. This uh, polygon over here, I want to have the word label down here at the bottom. Okay. And then gray here on the top. That means that I have to take the move tool and move my UV polygon over here, something like that. And of course I get exactly what I wanted. And then in this other polygon over here, I want to have the word text. So I go ahead and take the move tool again. Now that I have that selected and move that over here. And voila, I have my text word in there with gray color on top. Now for this polygon in the back, I would like to have the square, the yellow square being applied there, but being like an inset square, not rotated, but straight. So that's very simple. I simply go to the selection tool with my UV polys again, click in here to select that polygon, that UV polygon, use my move tool. And in my 2D view, I can go here and maybe use my rotate uh, tool over here. And just by, by looking at the angles, I know if they are more or less exact. And of course I need to do the move tool and then my scale tool. And again, my move tool with the letter E until I get that inset uh, square inside my, my polygon there. Okay, so something like that. That's, that looks good. So you can see, even though the yellow uh, square is tilted in the graphic, in my actual uh, model, it is somewhat straight. Okay. Of course, if I, if I was supposed to create this straight, I probably would, would have done this uh, square in Photoshop uh, straight instead of having the trouble here to align it perfectly, rotating the UV poly. So just keep that in mind that, you know, the, the idea of uh, texture mapping is to make your life easier and more uh, convenient. But in this case, what I'm trying to show you is that you can actually uh, even play with your polygon orientation to get what you want. So let's suppose that in here I want the maybe a little half a circle of the white area and a little bit of the blue. So I'm going to select with my selection tool this polygon and with my move tool move that into the area that I want. The letter T to resize that a little more and the letter E to move it like so. Okay, so that's the idea. Perfect. And down here, maybe I want to create a completely red uh, color, flat color in there. So that means that I have to go to selection tool, click in here, and with my move tool again, move that into the red, and I can still make it smaller. So I am sure that is actually using all the red of that circle. Okay. So as you can see, I very specifically went to every single polygon into this cube and mapped it according to what I wanted to, to have. Okay, so it doesn't matter how your uh, UVs are laid out in here, as long as you can get the effect that you want. Many times, uh, for example, when you are creating characters and, and if your character has two hands that are identical, maybe you would just want to create one map for the two hands. And then you just put the polygons 
in the same exact location, so they are mapped at the same time. Okay, and I'm talking about the UV polygons. So as you can see, in this case, I was successful at doing that. And uh, okay, so I hope this uh, second tutorial has given you a little more introduction into body paint. And I hope to see you in part three. Okay, bye bye.